All right, welcome everybody tonight. Our the topic for tonight is cholesterol. Um, understanding cholesterol, um, cholesterol story, de uh, demystifying the myths and everything. So I'll turn the time over to Jade um, to share that with us. Yeah. Okay. So this is called unclogging the cholesterol story. Uh huh. So we'll share with you our screen here. Alrighty. Okay, so uh, I like to do a lot of research um, and uh, one of the things that I discovered was that uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding um, around cholesterol and uh, we just, uh, you know, I want to share with you what I've discovered so that you could uh, make uh, um, good choices for you, informed choices for you too, okay? Um, so, you know, for me, what I want to share with you today is just to, the, about the myth and um, to help you understand how inflammation and cholesterol uh, work together and um, you know how to have healthy cholesterol levels and what we can do to maintain a balanced cholesterol level and addressing emotional roots um, just because um, it can cause the unbalance of cholesterol and the problems around that. So I hope this will help you. Um, and uh, get you thinking because um, it's not uh, as a, a difficult problem as um, some may, may think. I've had a, quite a few people that have come back to me and um, had some fantastic results and it's quite simple. So let's unclog the um, myth. All right, so we've been fed by the media in the US, Canada, UK, New Zealand, and perhaps other countries too, uh, that cholesterol um, is the main risk factor of heart disease and stroke, um, and that that is evil. Um, and uh, so I want to share with you that I discovered that uh, the um, cholesterol level in your blood is not the main risk factor of heart disease and stroke, and uh, that cholesterol fat is actually good. Okay, don't kill me yet. Uh, we're just going to go through and I'll share with you a few things that I discovered. Um, so uh, Dr. D uh, Joseph McCullough, I don't know if you know him. Uh, he's one of the health experts that is now very active online. So I've been following him and learning from him for the last 10 years, him and a few others. Uh, but uh, he shared a lot of information on um, cholesterol and he said that uh, if your levels are around 200 is healthy it's good uh, don't let it go below 150 okay because you could be harming yourself okay uh, so there's a book that Dr. McCullough likes to quote and it's by Dr. Ernest Curtis and it's called the cholesterol delusion okay and delusion is like where you know I it's when something uh, that uh, it's a, a belief that is held even when evidence proves it contrary. Okay, uh, so what this book is about, um, and you can click on the link here and, um, and see the book, uh, it systematically refutes the prevailing theories that diet is linked to blood cholesterol levels um, and uh, coronary heart disease and heart attacks. Okay, so this book attacks the very foundation of it as a risk factor paradigm that uh, you know has dominated cardiovascular research um, and much of the medical world for the last 50 years. Okay, <laughs> has anybody ever heard of bad stories about cholesterol or, or has an experience yeah. with cholesterol? Um, okay, I'll just move on a little bit. Um, mm. Maybe you might have some things to say later on. But the cholesterol theory uh, was uh, developed by a German pathologist, and um, he just uh, did. Uh, he just looked at corpses, and uh, he um, observed the arterial walls of the. Um, corpse and uh, just theorized that it probably came from his their diet and so um, if they had a fatty diet that must have caused that um, the heart attack and um, deaths 
So, and so the clogging of the, the clogging arteries. Of the arteries. And so he connected it to fat. Um, and then other, other researchers, other scientists, um, they went ahead and did similar research. So like one guy, um, he fed a uh, high cholesterol diet to chickens and rabbits and found that their arteries had uh, high fat deposits. And he hypothesized again, that's 100% from the diet. Um, and there's a lot of flaws in their research, um, but you can read the research and um, look that up too. And there's other guys too, but uh, Dr. Mercola, he um, said that there's, there's a, a growing body of research now um, that disproves that theory, okay? Because what happens is people are so frightened of cholesterol that they are actually eating outrageously low fat diets, which, um, which means that they're eating a lot of foods that um, are unhealthy to, to their body. They uh, don't get enough of the healthy uh, oils and fats in their body. And um, it causes a lot of problems. Uh, and on top of that, people are taking cholesterol lowering, lowering medications um, that uh, causes more problems on the side. It's, it's not that uh, we're not saying, um, you know, have as much or lots and lots of cholesterol. We're not saying that. Um, we're just saying that, um, you know, we don't have to be so scared and frightened of cholesterol um, levels. Okay. Uh, so, of course, there's a extreme in every cases. So if you have, you know, 300 or uh, value more, points more, um, then that, that's, that's off the charts. It's, uh, you know, not uh, healthy. But if you are within a healthy range, and the healthy range have changed, but Dr. McCulley says it's around 200, um, then, you know, this is what we're, we're shooting for. Okay, so they're putting children on um, cholesterol medications too, and it's just... Uh, very disturbing because uh, you know um, causes a lot of health problems from that. The medications have side effects. Yeah, so they did a study with uh, uh, just research finding the actual link between the LDL cholesterol and premature death of those that are over sixty years old, and they tested about seventy thousand people, um, and uh, what they realized is. Um, the body actually produces 80 to 90% of its own cholesterol and it's not from the food, okay? Um, and there's no solid links between um, the fat that you eat and the cholesterol levels, okay? Yeah, so um, they found that actually 99.3% of the patients that are on the cholesterol reducing medications experience uh, no benefits from that, um, as in protecting their heart from having heart failure and um, uh, heart diseases. <clears throat> um, and uh, the drugs actually have other health problems that can cause very dangerous health conditions. Uh, so Dr. Mokola, he suggests that um, you, know, you can do two things. You can raise the optimal vitamin D levels Okay, vitamin D synthesizes. Um, as, as vitamin D synthesis depends on the cholesterol, and um, so he, he said he gets um, vitamin D from just healthy sun exposure. And number two, he says just reduce chronic inflammation. So inflammation is okay, but when we have chronic inflammation, it's you know the cholesterol acts like a blanket, um, you know a fire blanket, and it just you know, trying to patch up a lot of fires and, um, you know, reducing the inflammation reduces the excess buildup of cholesterol. So, yeah, we just wanted to balance the, um, I think, uh, people's view on cholesterol because a lot of people think cholesterol is bad, okay? So, anyone have anything to say? Yet, <laughs> I'd like to make a comment. Yes, it's interesting that you brought this up that cholesterol as a fire blanket. Mm -hmm. As we get older, as women in particular, and I understand that's my life, <laughs> as women in particular, as we go through the menopausal years, our cholesterol levels raise. They also raise quite high during pregnancy, and that is not a time when we even worry about cholesterol. And the doctor 
say don't even bother checking a cholesterol because it will be high in a pregnant woman. And I find this, when you bring up fire here, that's a really interesting um, word to use because when we're having hot flashes in menopause, um, the acupuncturist will say we've got too much fire in us. And so that's kind of an interesting word. But there are times in our lives when our cholesterol level will naturally go be raised or go higher on its own. And so there's a lot of truth, Jay, to what you are saying with regards that our body produces 80 to 90% of our cholesterol level, mm -hmm. regardless of diet. Yeah, it's a, it's, I learned so much because I was a little bit surprised because what I learned um, from the media was not the same as what I learned from all my reading and research. But then it started to make sense to me because we honor the body. The body makes the cholesterol for a reason. And we have to understand why it makes it and how it benefits us. So if, if we play the game, the right game, then we really benefit from this. Okay, um, so Dr. McCullough suggests a few things, uh, eight things in fact. Reduce your waist circumference within normal limits. Okay, just losing weight. That's I think is saying that in a nice way. Um, reduce the or eliminate smoking, and that's obvious. Um, I have a net carb of 20 to 30% of your caloric in, um, uh, okay, I'll read it properly. Reduce your net carbs to 20 to 30% of your total caloric intake. So, um, so yeah, that means like uh, carbs, uh, fat, fats, and protein, proteins. the ma macronutrients like yeah. that you can, for your calorie. So a lot of people, you know, they're eating a lot of breads. They're eating a lot of um, carbohydrates. Which so causes more inflammation. You just need to balance things a lot mm -hmm. better. Um, and eat healthy saturated fats. Uh, sometimes people just you know, throw a blanket on it and say, oh, that saturated fat must be bad. Um, but it isn't. If you think about it, the Eskimos, they eat a lot of fat. <laughs> and people in Okinawa eat a lot of fat. And it's not like most of them are falling dead from heart attacks all the time. They're quite healthy. They're very healthy. <laughs> okay. Um, so we need to look at that. Um, so we get about, get about 30 minutes of exercise each day. The reason is so that we can help our blood circulate nutrients in every part of our body. Okay. And part of that is um, that we circulate cholesterol too because cholesterol is important for cell production. No cell can produce, reproduce without cholesterol. Okay, so if, of course get up and move every day, he says, and improve your gut microbiome. Is that how you say it, Debbie? Yes, that's correct. And I want to make a comment here too. Scroll down just a little bit more, Ben. I'm back, scroll up, maybe. There you go. To, to, when you eat healthy saturated fats, Anytime, in my opinion, what I've always gone on to is anytime somebody's got high cholesterol, I recommend that they increase their omega oil intake. Yeah. <laughs> and um, usually that takes care of the issue. So, so there's a real interesting correlation. You brought up that word fire blanket and man, my brain is just spinning. <laughs> um, but years and years ago, after my second son and our, our background, our story was that we struggled for a long time to get our children to our family and adopted our first two boys. And after we adopted Jonathan, I had another miscarriage, and I began using virgin olive oil as a, I called it an olive oil cocktail at bedtime. And I am convinced that the diet change that I made at that time in my life and over the past 25 years or more, and adding that olive oil cocktail really assisted me in my fertility. And... I went in for a health fair at the hospital that I was working at with my two little boys in stroller tote. And um, they tested my cholesterol and my cholesterol at that time was 110. Now you're saying that's too low, but their response was, my gosh, are you a marathon runner? And I have never run a day in my life for the most part that I enjoyed. I have run, usually it's running after boys. Um, <laughs> but I have not really ever enjoyed running as an exercise routine. And it was funny because all I had been doing was this olive oil cocktail at bedtime. I never measured it. For those of you who are going to ask, I, it was one to three tablespoons of virgin olive oil mixed with equal parts of fresh squeezed lemon or grapefruit oil. And I drank that every night for, before bed for three solid years. And then I carried my next pregnancy to full term. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's a lesson to be learned there as we feed our body good, healthy fats. It is a must, not only for our 
our cholesterol, and, but also for our brain and our hormone balance and our endocrine systems. So we've got to have fat. Yes, thank you for bringing that up because it leads us right next to the next thing here. So cholesterol levels, uh, low cholesterol level is dangerous because we, our brain is mostly fat. Um, some people say it's up to 80% fat. I've read different things, but just it's mostly fat. Um, and uh, the brain needs the cholesterol to produce healthy levels of estrogen, testosterone, cortisone, and other vital hormones. So imagine if you deny your body of the ingredients to make these hormones, what's happening, right? Um, so consider the cholesterol like a grease or fire blanket in your body um, and just to help smooth uh, things, whatever is happening inside of your body, everything is moving smoothly. Um, and that's, that's what I think of when I see people um, with problems. I think, oh, more omega oils, more omega oils. That's a lot of times I would say that. And it's almost like, um, you know, you just have to make sure that they understand that this is good. This is good. Now don't be scared about it. It's not, you're going to make you fat. Um, so cholesterol is amazing in your body in lots of ways. It helps with cell production. It's in the cell membrane. Okay, of course, more hormones, like we said, vitamin Ds and bile acids um, that help with digestion. Okay, it helps with your liver. All right. So can you, you know, think and imagine if we had cholesterol-lowering drugs, um, what kind of problems that would cause? Okay, so if we have very low levels of cholesterol in our body, our brain is not producing the happy chemicals. So yes, we will have depression. Okay, our brain's not having an, enough uh, fat. It's going to have problems remembering and functioning. And of course, our hormones are going to be imbalanced. And remember, we need hormone balance uh, because, you know, we have problems like diabetes that is a hormone problem. Okay, um, you know, tissues, uh, you know, and uh, muscles are going to be damaged and maybe atrophy too because it needs the omega oils to fight against, um, to help them with inflammation. And we'll talk about that next. Of course, heart failure, uh, fatigue, because fat is fuel for our body. And of course, it risk, help risk, uh, risk of cancer because you know, how can your cells uh, create or new um, cells if they don't have the ingredients for it, okay? Uh, liver problems and it depletes your coenzyme Q10 levels. So, and that's just a few. And I've read a, a lot more and I thought, okay, that's enough. People get it. <laughs> so, a lot of things. I like what Debbie said about the olive oil. Uh, yeah. Olive oil is a really good oil to use in your cooking mm -hmm. as well as um, coconut oil. Yeah. Well, these are very healthy oils, oils to stay away from. I, think, I don't know if you get into this later on, but yeah. canola oil yeah, or I vegetable bet. oil. Um, those are highly processed oils, but mm -hmm. olive oil, the greener it is as well, the, yeah. the healthier it is. Uh, margarine, all those, those that are highly processed, think of them as um, plastic. You're just eating plastic because your body cannot break it down, metabolize it. It's just it's junk and debris in your body. And it causes a lot of problems. <clears throat> so it causes inflammation, of course, and other things. So don't even go so there. We use olive oil in yeah. all our cooking and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I have a link to uh, that post on good fats, bad fats. Yeah. Yep. All righty. So any anyone? other comments um, at this point? Anyone? I just don't know that you can get too much omega oil. Yeah. It seriously reduces inflammation. And it is not only heart healthy, but it's healthy in every way, brain healthy, body healthy. Yes. And so when people are struggling with inflammation, I will encourage them to triple their omega oil intake. Mm -hmm. um, when they're struggling with hormone imbalance, I will encourage them to triple their omega oil intake. I'm not sure you can get too much. <laughs> um, you know, some people that are trying to reduce their, their fat, mm -hmm. um, the body fat, um, one of the best ways to do it is eat some good fat because the good That's fat the it does not store on the body. In fact, the um, bodybuilders, when they're trying to reduce their body fat, you know, so you can see them, their muscles and everything, they like they'll wake up in the morning and they'll they'll take a you know a tablespoon or two of coconut oil. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're just eating mm -hmm. fat, but it's healthy fat because the healthy fat helps cancel out the bad fat. Yep. Whereas there's a lot of people that are avoiding all fats all together and and they're they're packing it on because there's so yeah. much unhealthy fat out there. Mm -hmm. 
let's run an experiment between those of us that are on this class. <laughs> yeah. I do our omega oil intake for the next week and meet back here again next Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, Ben always laughs at me because he's like, how come the omega oils are gone? And we always find extra thing of omega oils. I do too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just eat it, just eat it. And I do, I do do the coconut oil too. I just eat it. Um, yeah, it's really good. I haven't had huge weight problems. <laughs> yeah, so inflammation and cholesterol. So think of cholesterol as a Band-Aid inside your body for acute inflammation. Okay, cholesterol is important. Um, it has this important job and it senses the tissue damage somewhere caused by the inflammation. And so the inflammation helps the body and know where to, to go to heal and repair, right? So cholesterol goes there, um, constricts the blood vessels and stops you from bleeding to death. Okay, cholesterol works like a glue or handcuffs or just, you know, jump on the bad um, invaders like viruses, bacteria and all the other bad guys. And it helps your immunity um, you know, bring in all the, the chemicals to fight these invaders. Okay, so you see that, um, you know, inflammation isn't bad in and of itself because it helps your body go to the place where it needs to have attention. Okay. And then um, cholesterol isn't bad either because it goes there and it helps you in so many different ways. Okay. Um, think of that flammable in the middle of that inflammation word. Yeah. Of a right. fire blanket. I mean, yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's how I think. I think of it in a picture form. I think, yep, just put out the fire, fire blanket. Phew. Okay, so come on, guys, go fix this problem. But guess what? When we have uh, inflammation that is chronic, that's all over our body because we feed it bad foods and all these things, and it's all over, it's everywhere, it's all the time, that's when our body has an overproduction of cholesterol. Okay? Um, so... Uh, that means the cholesterol is going everywhere, doing everything, and it just it's just too much. It's more than it needs to be, okay? And now, you know, if you think about on the outside of your body, if you have a cut, your body produces a protective seal, seal that we call a scar. But if you have the internal um, damage somehow, you know, the cholesterol, or um, well, before the cholesterol comes, the, your body tries to use a plaque-like thing that is, uh, you know, a scar. So it's, it's different. It's not cholesterol. Spark. and that, that actually um, will you know hold hold that tissue together but imagine if you keep on having lots of chronic problems your body will have a lot of plaque but the cholesterol comes and helps be a part of the production of new tissues new cells okay so it's the plaque that um, they that is causing a lot of that uh, constriction of the arteries and it's not necessarily the cholesterol. Like a lot of internal scarring from the chronic yeah. inflammation. Mm -hmm. Internal scarring. And of course the emotion, when we address the emotion, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, we're, we're constricting our joy, so we keep on putting more plaque in there, constricting the flow of life. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's really different. It's really different way of looking at it. Uh, so cholesterol is actually the good guys. Your body made it and it's inside your body. It's, a, it's got a healthy function um, and your liver makes about 75% of that body's cholesterol. Um, and it, the immune system calls on the liver to assist when there's inflammation in the body. So the liver kind of sends out the cholesterol into the bloodstream to assist what's happening out there. Okay, here's the, the fire truck coming, you know, we're going to put out that fire. Um, so remember, the cholesterol comes out and he helps with a production of new cells. So a new cell can be formed without cholesterol. Right, so chronic inflammation is caused by external factors, you know, food and other things that, that cause the, the stress. The stress. Um, cause the tissues inside to be distressed, to be damaged in some ways, and then the plaque forms, okay? And um, that causes the damage, that causes the, the um, plaque, okay? The constriction. Yes, anybody want to say anything? <laughs> you know, um, a long time ago when Jaden had early signs of her, this going on, um, 
she started having trouble after she ate with her stomach and she had something else. But the pediatrician I worked for, he believed in old things and he would explain it to me. And, you know, sometimes when he would say stuff, I would be like, I remember my grandpa doing that to Kleshaw. I remember the, my grandparents doing that. And he was like, well, that's because it works. You know, if, yeah. you try, if, you try, if you go away from these old things and we do too much medicine and everything, it doesn't work as good because that's not what it's supposed to do. And the thing that he told Jaden um, was to eat a tablespoon or put um, on a piece of bread the um, coconut oil. Mm -hmm. And he told her to take as much omega oil as she could because it would help her brain with the fat and that she needed that cholesterol to stop all this pain before it got worse. And he told her that this, this pain that you're feeling is inflammation and it's in your gut. And if I gave you this antibiotic to clear that, you would have to take a lot of it and it would completely clear it out and you would be gone from this. But I don't want to give you that much antibiotic, but that's the problem is it's in your gut and you need to produce these cholesterol and fats to help your body heal itself. And, you know, I knew he was right, but Jaden is horrible about taking, but she did the, um, I mean, we got her a big thing of the coconut oil and her stomach wouldn't hurt. Like she did it every single day or every night. And, um, and it didn't really hurt. And when she stopped, she saw all that stuff start coming back. And so, um, you know, I ordered her the because she doesn't like, I love the Omega pills. I don't know. I love the way they smell. I love the way they taste. They're not so big to me. So I love them. And I, I take all the more than I should, but she hates it. So I ordered her the liquid form because I know that she needs it. And she realized that it helped her so much. So um, I ordered her that, but it's those simple things that you think may not have any kind of impact on your whole body working together, but it, it actually does, you know? And you can tell, that's excellent. You can tell if it's working, if your skin is moist and moisturized, okay? So your skin is no longer dry. Um, you know, your eyes are not dry. Um, so when people, they're constipated, you know, more omega oils. Um, so that's interesting. We, we have two amazing Omega oils. We have the Z Omega and the vegan version, but, uh, don't just have one type of, uh, Omega oil. Like uh, you're running out to get fish oil. You need a variety. And in doTERRA, we do have that supplement that has the variety of plant-based and marine-based Omega oils for you. Cause your body, like vitamins, you need a variety of vitamins and you need a variety of Omega oils. Okay. So we have that link there. So that's what we can do. Number two is just eat an anti-inflammatory diet. So reduce uh, the foods that ma is made from the chemical grains and refined sugars, especially the high fructose corn syrup. Um, it's so cute when my kids were little, they could, they, that's one of those first things they, they look for in uh, ingredients. They're like, oh, it's got high fructose corn syrup. Refined <laughs> tree labels. Yeah, and uh, so they'll put it down. Anyways, number three is eat intuitively. Wherever you are in the world, eat your local foods and eat it as fresh as you can, as whole as you can, because it will cause stability in your body. Refined foods cause instability um, in you. So even if you eat something sweet, because it's, it comes in its complete package, the fibers will actually help your body metabolize and digest. Okay, so some people say, oh, all sugar is bad, all this is bad. But if you think about it, people have been, in the past have eaten fat, have eaten sweet things, and it hasn't hurt them because they eat it in its whole form, in its raw form, in, in its um, natural form. Okay, so the antidote is with the, the sweetness too. Okay. Uh, and of course, exercise to spread the nutrients around through your blood flow. And so one of the most important things you can do is address your emotions and use essential oils. So we're going to go to the emotions now. But before we do that, does anybody have anything to say? Or any other solutions for reducing your yeah. cholesterol? Okay. Yeah, I had one lady came back to me within one month and she said, you know, she's, her life has changed and um, she's on a good, healthy level now. Anyways, let's go to the emotion part. We can do symptom management, um, you know, 
but to enjoy um, real good, solid, lasting health, we need to address the emotion side. So uh, Louise Hay said that cholesterol problem is a clogging, uh, clogging the channels of joy, fear of accepting joy. You know, our, our, our subconscious, it doesn't have any logic to it. So sometimes this is what we feel. And you just look at the life that you have. And if you are denying yourself of a lot of joy, um, you know, thinking, I don't have time, work before pleasure, uh, you know, maybe, you know, we could consider changing this in ourselves so that we don't develop a physical problem from this emotional um, thinking, in it, okay? So um, we can, anytime we can relax, use oils to relax, your body is going to produce the happy chemicals, um, your oxytocin, serotonin, and all those happy, healthy, healing chemicals in your body. So you smell your favorite oils to help you relax and balance. So here's a recipe for you. Okay, so I would suggest something like five drops of lemongrass, five drops of dill, if you can. We still have, they still sell it for the people in the US under the special, special. Um, it's a summer, summer. Summer thing, summer sensation, something, yeah. So we still can buy it. Uh, if you take it morning and night and, um, you know, and just see how you go, but it's awesome. And I don't think it should take you very long, uh, so. Um, but it's relative depending on how well you heal emotionally. So let's go through the four oils, okay? And uh, you know, that's it for today. <laughs> the first oil that, um, and it's part of the blend, is lemongrass. And we talked about lemongrass earlier. It's the oil of cleansing. So we're cleansing toxins, debris, and plaque in your body. Hello. <laughs> we just talked about that's so a physical plaque, but things that are stuck in there. Okay, it helps the mind think clearly and release the need to hold on to negativity and despair. And lemongrass helps you see that you can have joy like everyone else. Okay, so we can, there's a link there to our lemongrass class. So you can click there. Okay, uh, so that's lemongrass. It's a very powerful oil. It's um, uh, not a sissy. Okay, now dill. People are not familiar with dill because doTERRA doesn't sell dill on a regular basis. It's the oil of sustainability. It uh, helps you move from dread to joy. Isn't that interesting? Because it's um, something that people need. They just need joy. But then this here, we're thinking, oh, I'm kind of stuck. I, I don't know if I can maintain the joy. And sometimes I have random spurts of joy. But here it says, yes, you can keep going, keep going. So it helps you resist the urge to complain and to, you know, get emotionally down again, um, you know, going back to old habits. And especially it helps you release the feeling that you are taking on the world. All right. I, if I don't do it, nobody else does. It's, <laughs> you know, I, you know, you fix it and, here, when we have joy, sometimes we feel like it's counterintuitive because if we let go, who's going to do the work? Who's going to take care of the family? Who's, you know, things are going to happen, bad repercussions. Um, and it's just a vicious cycle. Um, but here is an opportunity for us to have faith and just let go and let the angels do their job. Okay, so that's lemongrass and dill. And the last two oil is um, clary sage and helichrysum. So clary sage is the oil of clarity and vision. It helps you be open-minded to new ways of living. And a new way for these people is fun, finding fun. Okay, that's a new way. And you can live a happy, joyful life and still be safe. Okay, because sometimes we associate being happy to, um, you know, uh, being, um, what do we call it, uh, when we're lazy or idle Care yeah idle, yeah. idle yeah. and then nothing gets done you know so um it doesn't have to go to that extreme so it helps us calm down it helps us relax and imagine the world to be more fun okay oh and uh if we, you just smell the clary sage this one you smell it and you can rub it on your third eye as often as needed because if you have a difficult time imagining a happier more joyful life 
then put that clary sage on your third eye and try to see more joy in your life. Alrighty. Okay, and the last oil is helichrysum. We talked about helichrysum before, um, and helichrysum is the oil of pain. Um, and perhaps uh, people that are suffering from um, super high cholesterol, maybe they think that they're well acquainted with pain and suffering, um, and uh, helichrysum invites them to allow themselves to finally heal. You're allowed to heal now from that pain. You are strong and no longer need to feel anguish and hopelessness. And helichrysum is a wonderful oil that you can rub over your liver area and do um, liver reflex points. Okie dokie. Anyone wanna ask questions or make comments? Just wanna say, I love dill. It's so yummy and I put it all in, I always put it in my guacamole. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I like it, but. So what's the big deal about dill? <laughs> and, I love, and I love pickles too. Yeah, wow. Okay, that's where my kids get it from. Dill pickles. Except for Emily. Okay. <laughs> but dill, you can see that it's sustainability. It's, it's, you know, you, you feel tempted to give up. You think, uh, you know, here it says, keep going. I want to keep going because I, I fear that I, I won't be able to keep this pace up. Amen. Gives you strength. Yes, when things are hard. I'm just making a capsule of lemongrass and dill tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we'll do. We'll do. Let's just all do it. <laughs> I want to see if my kids like dill because they love pickles and they love. Uh, we have a dry dill or something, and they'll put it on things. So I ordered the summer thing. So. I saw that in there, and with the things that it says it does, I know that they would want to uh, try that. So awesome! Yeah, yeah, that is a all a good oil to buy because um, they don't have it all the time. So I stock up on it. I have uh, three bottles, I think. Yeah, I don't need it, but in case, in case for some reason I need to be sustained. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So in summary, guys. Um, Cholesterol isn't bad, okay? It actually acts as a band-aid for us in our body, okay? If we have um, a healthy level around the 200s, that's good for our body functions. It helps with hormone production, um, helps with cellular regeneration, and it's a very important part of our body. Um, and if we understand our body and how the cholesterol works, um, it will be good for us to... Um, you know, to manage some of our health problems. Like anything, it can be taken to the yeah, extreme. Yeah, everything can so be taken to extreme. It's something you need to keep in balance. Yeah. So we say it's not bad, but you need to... Mm -hmm. Keep a balance. Yeah, so if you have way, way too high, these are the emotions that you need to look at so you can find happiness and joy. Okay, any questions? questions? Yeah. yeah. So, I have a question. So... Let's say we don't have dill. Um, lemongrass taken internally would be helpful to lower, like, uh, I know we're talking about cholesterol today, but I met with a client and it was her main goal to lower. And I explained it to her that the focus should be put on, in French we say LDL, so the bad fat level, which can be too high. Lemongrass can help with that. Yep, just lemongrass alone is fine. One lady that I helped, we didn't have lemongrass, we had lemon. And I said, just that bit. And within 30 <laughs> days, she came back and she goes, oh, good, I don't need to, <laughs> you know, lemongrass. Lemon, I, lemons are good to yeah. taste fire. But, but yeah. like, they're good for the liver as well, but okay. yeah. And so we could still do like five drops in uh, a veggie cap. And how, how long do you think? I know they have to do other things, but. Yeah, I know we. That's we a hard to... question to answer. Yeah, um, okay. But people can, you know, I see results within a few months, I believe. Like I said, I don't know what their diet's like. I don't know what their mental ability yeah. to to see sweetness and happiness and joy. Uh, well, definitely, and one of the first causes of high cholesterol is stress, yeah. negative stress, and yeah, and that's stress. how it's all linked together. So we have to work on other level, but okay. And in the um, 
a diffuser, would it be helpful in that matter or more on the emotions in the diffuser? Yeah, I would take that uh, the lemongrass internally and the oils that I would smell um, would be clary sage or other happy oils to help them find joy. That's, okay. the, that's the key. Okay, thank you. Change the way they think I'm allowed to be happy like everyone else. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I think somebody wants to say something. Is it Sean? Sean, go ahead and speak up here. Um, oh, I think you're you're muted. I'll unmute you, Sean. Okay. Can you hear me now? Uh -huh. Can yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. I've I've just thoroughly enjoyed. What you said and it's all things that I needed to hear so it's giving me an avenue I'm I have avoided taking cholesterol medication but the doctor keeps pushing it very hard because my cholesterol according to him is very high I do have plaque problems that I know about you know I have isometric stuff going on in my brain and so it scared me making me want to take something more and you know I'm not sure how to do the um, the lemongrass because I know I've taken it and I took too much. I think I was trying to make it just go away. <laughs> the problem and I then I really bought then it might broke out. All kinds of things happen. So, so what I want to ask you now is how long have you had that concern? Um, for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's quite a long time. You don't you don't want to force yourself to get rid of it overnight. Yeah, I would yeah. do maybe one or two drops in a capsule and take it easy. Okay. The very most important thing that you need to do is work on the emotion. Because the yeah. faster you change emotionally, the faster your body will, will change. Right, right. Yeah, I've been working on the emotional part. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And one very good thing, guys, is to write your parents' story. Um, what they believe about life. If you hear people say, oh, life is bitter, life is hard, life is unfair, life is uh, whatever, you know, um, write it down. This is what my parents have said. It's Sometimes you think about it and you don't realize that when I start writing, I think, oh my gosh, there you go, there you go. But what the benefit is, um, you look at each sentence and you write down the positive thoughts. Now you tell yourself, cancel, cancel, cancel that. And that sentence, cancel, and now here's the positive new power script from my mind. I have the power to create my life. But now right. I see clearly mm -hmm. that um, I can make this choice. Okay? And, you know, I did that with my parents, their money story, for example. And so I'm writing things down. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I forgot about that story. And then here's something else that comes up. And it's amazing to see. And, you know, when people just talk about it, it, it's not as effective because you look at that and then you write the equal and opposite. And you mm -hmm. look at that sentence and write the equal and opposite of that sentence. So one of the things is my parents were afraid that um, if they, um, they don't want to ever touch their kids' money, right? They, they say safe for their kids. And then they, um, when I was ready to go to Japan, I ended up, uh, they ended up having to use my savings, right? <clears throat> and they really felt bad and guilty about that. So, you know, when I saw that, I thought, okay, and I'm going to write an affirmation that, uh, you know, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of this. And I uh, am happy to um, provide and I can provide for my children. So they were afraid that, oh, what if I can't provide? Life is hard. And then I say, life is easy. <laughs> right? You have to write that and just clarify. Okay. Dog bark, you know, take off my sound. <laughs> Good to have you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Online. Yeah. People entering. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything that they want to add to um, cholesterol or cholesterol discussion? Not adding to your cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, it's been really good. As always, this video, this video and this discussion, that, that information is on jadebaldwin.com slash, uh, we'll change it, make it slash cholesterol. Um, so it's easy to get to. Um, yeah. 
Anything else you want to say? Last last words? No, we can stop the recording and then okay. really chat. To All right, we're going to go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you, everybody, for coming.